Uh, let's talk first about North Korea. It's fascinating. First time this guy's been out of North Korea since right. he's been in power. I would imagine that what has been happening behind the scenes with uh, Donald Trump dealing with China has a lot to do with North Korea going to China and Kim getting the finger wag at him, right? That's right. Um, and that, in fact, um, he, has a, he has a state visit scheduled with the president of South Korea in April, and then possibly we have the talks with uh, Trump coming up yeah, in Yeah, but the May. South Koreans can't squeeze him the way no, the Chinese can. But he's definitely going to them to probably lay out somewhat what his negotiating position is going to be with the United the States other and is, to see if he can get the support of China. I'm wondering a lot of questions about where the meeting between Trump and Kim would be. Maybe it'll be in China. That's right. I mean, that would be a logical place. I think they've discussed Scandinavia as well, but China would be, you know, also a very logical location. All right, let's move to Russia, because once again, kind of like dealing with China, Trump says something, and he, he says, hey, look, Putin's, I want to have good relations with Putin. He calls him up, congratulates him on a fraudulent election, but, but does so in a kind of perfunctory, so did President Obama. That's right. All of his critics say this proves there's collusion with Russia. Well, in fact... Meanwhile, he's kicking the Russians out of uh, Seattle, which is where we have some very key naval bases. Uh, right. He's he's doing also he's he's going to be meeting with the Baltic countries, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Latvia uh, coming up next week. This is a direct right. insult to President Putin. So while he says one thing, he does something very different. That's right. We should also never forget that President Trump has supplied lethal aid to the Ukraine to, in its in its attempt to get back the territory that Russia herself not took to from Ukraine. Not to mention hitting uh, Syria with Tomahawk right. missiles, and Syria, of course, is a close ally of Russia. That's right. And this, this, um, this ejection of diplomats is important, however, because we have to remember that Russia has more that would have at least 10 times as many intelligence officers directed against the West as any Western country would have in Russia or directed against Russia. So we can really hit them where they live by sending them home and really interfere with their collection efforts in the United States. Because these Russians are handling or seeking to handle Americans who are in key sensitive positions. By the way, if you can put that map up of the Baltic countries once again, the fact is, is that if Russia was to hit any of those countries, and they, Russia, when it was the Soviet Union, they had a key submarine base. They did. In Estonia, uh, they also had very key bases in Latvia and Lithuania. So this is a direct uh, attempt by the United States to say, don't go into the Baltics the way you went into the Ukraine. Absolutely. And President Trump has been very good with standing firm with all of our allies. In this case, uh, what we're doing uh, with 18 other countries, the ejection of Russian diplomats is in solidarity with allies who are also affected. And also, it's important to stand by Estonia, uh, the Baltic states, because these countries feel very threatened by Russia. There's no natural barriers to invasion there. And those countries are very concerned about Russian activity within their own outside, but also within your own country. Scott Eulinger, good to see you, Scott. Thank you very Thank you. much.